Hello and welcome in the UK. Today we're looking at the case of Glyn Williams. Williams spent most of his adult life in and out of prison and was well known as one of the ringleaders for the rooftop protests at Strangeways Prison in Manchester in 2000. He was sentenced to 10 years but was released early but was in and out of prison on many occasions after that. In November 2015, he went to a party at the house of Sean Roberts. He never left. Sean was discovered dead the next day. In 2017, Williams was sentenced to life imprisonment with a maximum term of 21 years. To find out more about this case, visit us at www.murderuk.com or stay tuned right here for a documentary about this case. Thank you. In 1998, 29-year-old Cianne Roberts moved to this quiet street in Salford, near Manchester, and gave birth to a baby daughter. Cianne trained as a hairdresser at a local college and soon found work, but after her father's death and a series of breakups, she began to struggle with depression. In 2015, her mother died. Having nursed her through a long illness, the loss hit Cian hard. Cian cared for her parents up until their deaths, and this really did affect her. She suffered from depression, and she really felt like she needed a fresh start. But the local community rallied round, and by the end of the year, Cian was starting to turn her life around. Well, from within the community, there were people who cared for Cian. In fairness, it's not different to anywhere else. It's a diverse community. But in November 2015, everything would change forever. Having not seen her for a couple of days, Cian's friends start to become concerned. One of them goes to her house and is shocked by what he finds. Hello, police emergency. Well, yeah, if you send the, send the uh, ambulance and the police, uh, she, she's dead, she's dead. Uh, where to, please? Yeah, uh, St. Helier's Drive. St. where, sorry, sir? St. Helier's Drive. No, me. No, listen, listen. Stay on the line for me, just try and calm down a bit. It's a statement. No. Oh, sh uh. Who, who are you saying is dead? Sian Lee, Sian Roberts. Sian Roberts. She's on the floor, she's so much, she's coming up with her I just pulled back the coat off her. Yes, yeah, she's full of blood. Where, where's she been bleeding from? I can't see it, mate. And you've, have you checked for a pulse? There's, there's no pulse. No, she's, she's, dead. she's dead. Right. She's dead. Within minutes, first responders arrive in the cul de sac. Well, my name is Pam Mather. I've worked for Greater Manchester Police for 19 years and uh, I currently hold the position of Crime Scene Manager. It was on the Sunday evening. Um, I was on a 2.10 shift and um, the DI contacted me directly and asked me to attend the scene. He explained that it was um, a suspicious death. At the scene, police are met with a man claiming to be a friend of Cianne's who says he found her lying dead in her bedroom. This is the same man who had made the emergency call from her house. He had found Sian, um, and it was him that had alerted the police um, to attend at the property. Whereabouts in the address is she? She's in the bedroom, I thought there's shit all over the place. Someone, someone, someone's been in it. Right. Someone's been in it. Obviously, someone's So she's on the floor upstairs in the bedroom. We entered upstairs of the property where we were told that there was a body, a female body, on the floor in what would be the back bedroom. When police try entering the room, it appears to be blocked. You couldn't really enter the scene of the bedroom because the door would only open ajar. 
you could see just from opening that door that there was numerous items spilt around that floor, clothing, boxes, wardrobe door, footwear, scattered all around. Police managed to break their way into the bedroom and find Sian dead on the floor. A knife had also been placed into Sian's hand, potentially, initially, making it look like she'd um, inflicted the wounds to herself. Just from the injuries, from the scale, from the depth of the injury uh, to the right side of the chest, we knew that the murder weapon was bigger than the knife in her hand. This wasn't a suicide, self-inflicted or accidental. This was a murder inquiry. Police launch a murder investigation, but first they need to secure the scene. The man who made the 999 call is taken to the station to give a statement. It's quite clear from that that he's very distressed at what he's seeing. He's very concerned and he's very distressed on the phone uh, when he makes that call. Police swiftly assess the scene before them to try to ascertain what had really gone on. A lot of items had been tipped out and placed onto Sian's body. There was also some um, sex toys, um, a vibrator and some handcuffs. Was this a burglary gone wrong? Or was there a sexual motive behind this brutal crime? Police then make a crucial discovery. After Sian had been stabbed, it's quite clear that she'd lived for a time after because there's evidence uh, at the uh, murder scene in the bedroom that Sian at some point had been sat on the side of the bed bleeding out. But of course she's found on the floor at the side of the bed. That was denoted by the large pool of blood that was found on the floor uh, just under the bed, which would indicate that she has been moved during or potentially after she has passed away. It's now clear that after killing Sian, her attacker moved her body. Could her killer have then panicked and called the police? You fucking stupid <laughs> you fucking on me! You stupid <laughs> Who else is in the address at the moment? No one, no one! Police immediately hone in on the man who found Sian. What is your name? My name's Joel Gordon. Mother of one, Sian Roberts, has been murdered. Her body found in her home by her friend, a man by the name of Joel Gordon. But having assessed the scene and discovered Sian's body was moved after her death, police have a theory. The working hypothesis that we had was that Joel Gordon, who found her, was involved in the murder following an argument. Police immediately arrest 36-year-old Joel Gordon so they can interview him under caution to ascertain if he knows more about what happened. A 36-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of murder after a woman was found dead in Salford. Officers were called to St Helier's Drive last night. Police say the area is still cordoned off to find out how she died. Detectives want to know who Joel is and what his relationship is with Sian. They were childhood sweethearts and they reconnected later on in life. People would describe them as inseparable and that they had a really strong connection. Despite the pair having given their relationship another go, they soon split up but remained friends and in daily contact. Joel Gordon, uh, a very interesting character, um, albeit all the family of Sian was saying he was a good influence and good for her. When Joel is questioned by police, he maintains his innocence and explains that he broke into Sian's home after not being able to get through to her for almost two days. Joel was explaining that he had found Sian um, and it was him that had alerted the police um, to attend at the property. Joel found her. He eventually on the Sunday night, having failed to uh, get hold of her on the phone, having failed to get a reply to the door, he goes round the back of the house, and the back patio doors are open. So he goes in uh, up to the bedroom, 
and he finds Sian. My name's Joel Gordon. Joel Gordon. He gave quite a graphic account as to how he had found Sian, um, what actions he had taken to see whether um, she'd passed away. Um, he also um, was able to describe the crime scene in a level of detail that potentially somebody that hadn't taken those actions wouldn't have been able to do. When detectives look into Joel's background, they make a key discovery. He has a criminal history. He'd killed someone previously. He, he was, in fact, uh, a man who was out on licence, having been convicted of a previous murder, uh, which was a knife murder. Police quickly establish that Joel Gordon has already served time for murder. Back in 1997, after stabbing a teenager to death. That person had um, a past which was very concerning, and that put him at the top of the list of suspects. Because of his criminal past, police are able to keep Joel in custody while they continue their investigation into CN's murder. When the results of the post-mortem come in, they reveal CN suffered a brutal knife attack. The nature in which Sian had, um, had been killed uh, appeared to be incredibly violent to me. She'd been stabbed four times. That stab wound was the fatal one in, in, her, in her right chest area, right side. That went in 16 centimetres deep and was 4.1 centimetres wide. Sian's wounds also show a struggle may have taken place with her killer. She had two potentially defensive injuries to her right hand where you either grab at or try and deflect the knife that's been thrust at you. Defensive injuries make you readily aware that that person knows somebody is coming at them with a knife and they think they need to protect the vital parts of their body. That person knows that somebody is trying to, at the very least, really hurt them and probably kill them. With Joel Gordon still in custody, forensic officers processed the crime scene, hoping to find more evidence linking him to the murder. And when they inspect the pool of blood in the bedroom where Sian was found, they find footwear marks. in some of the clothing that was around and bedding that was, had been placed on top of Sian, um, it was very evident that there were footprints in blood. So once we'd photographed some of the um, footwear evidence, so footprints in blood and also latent footprints, um, copies of those um, impressions were given to the um, major incident team that was dealing with this job at the time. The footwear impressions that we had seeing very consistent footwear impressions in blood and in Sian's blood. They were in the bathroom, they were in the bedroom, on different layers of debris that was put on top of Sian. So we knew what type of footwear we were looking for. Police have a strong clue in the hunt for Sian's killer. Will this link Joel Gordon to the murder? As forensics decide to head back to compare the footprint with Joel's shoes, there's a development outside Sian's house. David Morgan turned up at the police cordon and declared himself to be boyfriend of Sian and his behaviour by the officer of the cordon was considered a bit odd. David Morgan asks the police if the person inside the property has been stabbed. But this information has not been revealed to the public yet. It is an immediate red flag to the police. And he was also asking who was inside the property, which, as Sian's boyfriend, he probably should have known that she lived there. So this raised some eyebrows with the police force, and they decided that they should investigate him further. Another hypothesis was that uh, he was involved, because crimes like this, um, generally, it's somebody known to the victim. Not always, and you do keep an open mind, but you start looking close to home first. Police want to know more about David Morgan, and his relationship with Sian. But he leaves the scene before police can question him further. We had a phone number he'd left at the cordon. Um, 
He answered once, he failed to keep an appointment. Uh, he then didn't answer his phone, uh, so his behaviour was strange. Detectives become concerned that David Morgan appears to be avoiding their calls. Has this man got something to hide? We knew he knew the victim, so a decision was made to arrest David Morgan. Police have now identified two suspects in connection with Cian's murder. An ex-partner and a current boyfriend. When a murder takes place, it's often the people who are closest to them who've carried out the crime. So if you are a partner or an ex-partner, statistically you are more likely to be the person who's murdered them. Police make their way to David Morgan's address to arrest him. However, upon arrival, they stumble across another man leaving the house. This man is called Glyn Williams. But before he is able to leave, detectives notice his shoes look rather familiar. Glyn Williams was stopped by a very alert detective who said, who are you? Glyn Williams, uh, I want to look at your feet, your shoes. So he showed him the soles of his shoes and the officer uh, knew that they were the same type of footwear that we were looking for from the murder scene, so Glyn Williams was arrested. So that, that was not just luck, it was uh, good, old-fashioned policing. Both David Morgan and Glyn Williams have been arrested in connection with Cian Roberts' murder. Police now have three suspects in custody. But who is actually responsible? So you're trying to piece together, are they involved? Aren't they involved? How can we eliminate them? With his boots appearing to match the footprints found in Cian's blood, detectives want to know who is Glyn Williams and what is his connection to Cian Roberts. Cian Roberts and uh, Glyn Williams uh, met probably uh, three months prior to a murder. They didn't know each other that long. Uh, they met through uh, mutual friends. During a police interview, Williams describes to police a party that took place at Cian's home the night before her murder. I was at her address on Friday, um, into the early hours, so about quarter to three into Saturday, and that was my last contact with any persons I've just named from the house. From there I went to I stayed there um, all that night, got my head down. Um, Saturday morning, I've gone about my business. He was uh, absolutely adamant. Uh, he hadn't uh, seen Sian. Uh, he hadn't uh, been with her. But at the end of the day, to me, uh, Sian's death is... I'm surprised by it, I'm shocked by it, but I'm also shocked by the fact that I'm labelled a suspect. Yeah. I've never had issues with Sian. Police only have a matter of days to find evidence to charge one of their three suspects, or let them go. They need to piece together their movements on CCTV in the days leading up to and the day of Sian's murder. And it isn't long before police uncover a vital clue. It's absolutely crucial. It's on camera. It is what it is. It has been less than a week since Cian Roberts was found murdered in her home. Police still have three people in custody. Joel Gordon, David Morgan and Glyn Williams. There was quite a bit of interest from the local media now that three people have been arrested on suspicion of Sian's murder. People wanted to know who had murdered her and what the connection was between the three different men. Police have a crucial source of information to help them crack the case. Hours of CCTV footage of Sian in the hours leading up to her murder. So we had four people we needed to track on CCTV. And we started to piece together the movements of uh, Sian, 
the movements of Glenn Williams, the movements of Joel Gordon, and we had David Morgan. We really do go far and wide for CCTV because it's absolutely crucial and it's something that cannot be argued. It's on camera, it is what it is. When police trawl through the local CCTV, they manage to locate video footage that reveals a group of people entering Sian's house the night before her death. We were very, very fortunate in that we had a, a camera from another resident, residence that covered the front address of uh, Sian's house. So what that CCTV showed was events on the Friday night into the Saturday morning whereby her friends attended her property uh, and they had a party on the Friday night. When police watch closely, they see five people enter the house at 9.10 p.m., one by one. But five hours later, only four people leave. The following morning, the CCTV reveals Sian leaving her home with a man. Just after 10 a.m., they both return. They both enter the house. One of them is Sian. The other is her killer. Police hone in on the person seen with Sian leaving her house at 9.35 a.m., 30 minutes before she was viciously murdered. But can they identify this person? Police spread their net wider and locate multiple cameras in the local area, tracking the pair's movements before they return to Sian's house on St. Helia's Drive, 30 minutes later. They go to a cafe called the Godfather Cafe, where they separate. Sian goes in and buys two breakfasts. The other person appears to walk off up the high street, while Sian waits inside. But some minutes later, Sian's friend returns and can be clearly seen outside. Sian sees him, they, they speak to each other, she waits for the breakfast to be completed cooking and then follows him to a local shop. And when police trawl the CCTV in this local shop, they finally identify the man as 53-year-old Glyn Williams. When the police bring him in for interview, Williams doesn't know he's been spotted on CCTV with CN. You know, we can do this all day. Of course we can. When was the last on? time you were in that room? Friday. Are you absolutely certain of that? Yes. When you get my boots back, I'm going to tell you, they're not my boot prints. Right. Lynn Williams denies being with Sian Roberts on the morning she was murdered, but police believe the CCTV footage proves otherwise. And when the DNA results from the footprints found in Sian's blood come back, they point to one clear suspect. The footprints that are found in that address, in blood, okay, in blood, have been identified as being a match to the footwear seized from you. That doesn't make me the murderer. Does it? It was Sian's blood on his shoes. Once we presented him with that, he then came up with uh, the story of uh, he found her. Uh, he, he went in uh, the back patio doors and he found her in that state. He didn't ring the police because he thought he, thought he would get arrested for murder. Glyn Williams now changes his story. Having initially claimed he last saw Sian on Friday night, 
when she was still alive, he now tells police he discovered her dead and panicked, fleeing the scene without reporting it, something he claims he is ashamed of. What happened, Glenn? On the Sunday, I went to his hands. I've gone in through the back doors. I've seen blood. I've walked all the way round it. And I've come back out. And that's the truth. Is that the truth? Or? Yeah, it is the truth. Is that I didn't want to be seen as a coward. Detectives re-look at the CCTV to see if Glyn Williams actually left the house shortly after finding Sian's body. But they quickly discover he did not leave her house until several hours later. Sian's dead, okay? And you told us that the last time you were with her mm -hmm. was Friday, Friday night into Saturday yeah. morning, all right? The big significance of that is you're on CCTV with her hours and hours and hours after you told us you were. Yeah, but we're... what's the reason that you didn't tell us about that? It's important, no more lies. There's no reason for you well, to I wasn't lie. telling you lies, I just didn't tell you everything. So you just didn't tell us the truth. CCTV and DNA evidence put Glyn Williams at the scene of the murder around the time it was committed. But who is Glyn Williams? How does his path cross with Sian's? And why would he want to kill her? Sian had a troubled life. She got involved in drugs early in her life. Her family, her sister, had tried to help her give up drugs. She'd even been living at her sister's house in the weeks prior uh, to her death in an effort to go cold turkey, to give up the drugs. But that had failed and she'd left her sister's house and gone back to her group of friends and, and drug taking. During this time, Sian was introduced to Glyn Williams. Sian and Glyn knew each other because of their common use of drugs. They were both drug users uh, and hence from that had a very chaotic lifestyle. People would say that Sian was a very friendly and lovely person who had a lot of friends but perhaps after the death of her parents, she was a bit lonely and she liked to invite people into her house. On the night before Sian's murder, several people went to her house. They are caught on a neighbor's CCTV camera. One of these party goers is Glyn Williams. The following morning, both Glyn and Sian are seen walking towards the Godfather Cafe. Sian is on her way to buy them both breakfast, unaware her companion will kill her within the next 30 minutes. Shortly afterwards, Sian follows Glyn to a local shop. They start a conversation and then leave. Moments later, they are seen returning to her house. Just after 10 a.m., they arrive back, enter, but Sian is never seen again. Our view is that he killed Sian very shortly after they returned to her house on the morning of Saturday the 28th of uh, November. They went in with their breakfast, they didn't eat them. There was only one sausage that had a, a, a slice taken out of it and the fork that that had used had Glyn's DNA on it. He then spends the, approximately the next seven hours in the house, compromising the crime scene, disguising it, positioning Sian's body. Following this, Glyn Williams stays in the property and attempts to remove himself from any traces of the crime. In the bathroom, we actually found DNA evidence to suggest that Glyn Williams had um, actually been in that bathroom, potentially bleeding. We found a diluted blood stain on the windowsill of the bathroom. 
which turned out to be a mixed profile DNA sample from both Cian and Glyn Williams. Glyn Williams remains in Cian's house for several hours. He's waiting for the cover of darkness. He leaves by a, a neighbour's garden, so he's, he's hopped over a couple of back garden fences uh, because we have him on CCTV uh, coming out. And from there, he then just resumes his normal daily business of going buying drugs, going mixing with drug takers and, and socialising with people. The following day, Williams meets up with friends and makes himself known to Cian's current boyfriend, David Morgan. He wants information, he wants to see if the police are going to get close to him. So he's befriended uh, David Morgan um, and presented himself as a friend of Cian's when that actually wasn't true. But it's this new friendship which leads Glyn Williams right into the arms of the police. Police have three men in custody, but all the evidence is pointing to Glyn Williams as being Cian's killer. But with Glyn claiming he was in the property, but did not murder Cian, detectives need irrefutable evidence before they can charge him. Police interrogate Joel Gordon and David Morgan and are told by both men that they had in fact been calling Cian for two days before she was found. Police follow this through and check the phone records of Joel Gordon and David Morgan during the 29th of November. Some of the telephone evidence uh, was really important. They were making calls uh, to Cian and uh, even though you know, at the murder scene uh, the phone was there but the SIM card had been taken out, the battery had been taken out by Glyn Williams. It was the phone calls going in to try and locate uh, Sian from Joe Gordon and from David Morgan uh, that certainly helped us to eliminate them from the investigation. Police release the two men. They need to build their case against Glyn Williams. And days later, new DNA results return from the lab. And there is a breakthrough. Fifty-three-year-old Glyn Williams has been interviewed by police for two days for the murder of C.N. Roberts. After exploring all the evidence, police now know their killer is sitting right in front of them, and detectives are prepared to offer him one final chance to confess the truth. I, I told you the truth to the truth. You said consistently that you left Sian's, Sian's house in the early hours of Saturday morning and did not see it again. For two days, you maintained that interview, yeah? It's now transpired in a subsequent interview that you have attended her address and you found her deceased. He isn't commenting, he isn't responding. His body language demonstrates quite a lot of arrogance. It's almost as if he's resenting. How dare you question me about this? You state that you exit Sean's well, house. I'm back to myself, I've been through the fucking interview. She right. watched the fucking written book, and I get me back to myself. Now. Right. He deflected anything that pointed evidence at him by simply either not answering it or saying you've got it wrong in, in interview. I was like, because I haven't fucking murdered him. Yeah. Listen to what I'm saying, watch me lips really careful. I'm going to say this one last time. I have no reason to hurt Sian. With Glynn still denying his involvement, Police need to decide whether to charge him or release him. But then new DNA results come in, and it's a game changer. Glyn Williams' cellular material was found under Sian's fingernails. Significantly to that is, on arrest, Glyn Williams had some scratch marks um, on his throat that indicated that Sian had scratched him during the struggle and the altercation that took place. This evidence proves to police that Glyn Williams must have fought Sian that morning 
after they returned with their breakfast. And that, in a fit of rage, he stabbed her to death. And yet, even with all the evidence stacked against him, police do not have a clear motive for the crime. But friends of Sian revealed to detectives that she had to fend off Glynn's unwanted advances. Glynn was attracted to Sian. He was attracted to her and wanted to go into a relationship with her. Glynn Williams was telling people that he loved Sian and he wanted to marry her, but it turns out he was actually giving her gifts of jewellery that belonged to other people. And it appears it wasn't just other people Glynn was stealing from. Police believe he had started to steal from Sian. And on the morning of her murder, they believe he was trying to sell jewellery he had stolen from her house. He had disposed of some of her property earlier that day. He'd uh, passed on uh, cheap items of jewellery in a, 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 a shop in Cheetah Mill and he is seen on CTV going into that shop, bending down, opening his rucksack as Sian comes back uh, to meet him with their breakfast. Police interview the shop worker seen present in this footage, who confirms that Glyn Williams was about to show him some jewellery, but is interrupted when Sian walks in. I think Glyn, Glyn Williams' um, <coughs> violence uh, towards Sian uh, was probably escalated because he was stealing from her and she's probably found him, that, that's what we believe. And Sian is not somebody who will sit back and accept that. She will have challenged him for sure. Police believe that when Sian confronted Williams, it caused the argument which erupted into violence and led to her untimely death. Police have everything they need to charge Glyn Williams with the murder of Sian Roberts. He now faces a murder trial, and a jury will ultimately decide his fate. But this isn't the first time Glyn Williams has been linked to a crime. His life is in fact a story of crime. He's a great criminal, you know, from, from the 1970s. He's, he's been thieving, he's, he's a burglar. These many, many events of burglary, some minor assaults. From what we do know of Glyn Williams, he, from a young age, got involved in petty crime and drug abuse. He was in and out of prison for burglary and, over time, became a prolific burglar. And his criminal backstory didn't stop there. 25 years before Sian's murder, the Manchester prison riot lasted for 25 days. The shocking revelation was that this man was a key figure in the Strangeways riots, the longest prison revolt in British history. So it's no surprise that someone who was exposed to violence from such a young age would be able to go off and do something like this in later life. Glyn Williams' history is littered with rebellion. He doesn't care for authority. The riots that he took part in were violent, they were sustained, they were prolonged, and it was all about saying no to the rules and regulations. If you think about him in society in general, that's how he lives his life. He rejects the norm, he rejects morality, and he does exactly what he likes to do. The trial into the murder of C.N. Roberts begins at Greater Manchester Crown Court. The prosecution present every detail of the evidence against Glyn Williams. But even with this stacked up against him, Glyn Williams denies it all. The defence tactic in this trial was to blame anybody and everybody except Glyn Williams. But his favoured line was that the killer was Joel Gordon, a convicted killer. Throughout the course of the trial, Williams disrupts the courtroom. He on occasions wouldn't come out of his cell. And he'd sacked two lots of counsel who were representing him. That shows his power need. He wants to control everything. If it's not going his way, he will create a diversion so that he can hopefully regain that power and control. And William's behavior reaches new levels of barbarity. 
he actually throws his own excrement at his defence team. That is absolutely unheard of. The fact that somebody would act that way in court. But it draws us into his personality trait. And that's how he's lived his life. Disrespecting rules, regulations and authority. And in this scenario where he had little control, it was the only way to draw attention back to him. In February 2017, the trial into the murder of C.N. Roberts comes to a close. The jury have reached a verdict. The jury came back with their verdict and they found him guilty of murder and he was sentenced to 21 years. He would not accept his guilt. Uh, he was absolutely dishonest, a uh, despicable character. He is just someone who is in denial of what he's done. He has done it. There is no question of that. But even with the case now closed and Glyn Williams locked behind bars, nothing will alleviate the pain inflicted upon CN's family. What's really sad about this case is that CN represents so many people out there, good, compassionate, loving humans who unfortunately find themselves in the throes of a serious drug addiction. The most tragic thing about this case is that Sian simply got involved in the wrong crowd. She was trying to kick her drug addiction for her daughter, but she could never manage it, and this is where she ended up. Thank you for watching. Murder UK is a website dedicated to giving the facts about murders and serial killers within the UK. Please consider subscribing and press that bell icon to be notified when we update new videos. Thank you.